guys, it's me, Stormy, and it is time to talk about our next eclipse we'll be experiencing in February 2018, which will be a partial solar eclipse. It's going to be happening Thursday, February 15th at 27 degrees of Aquarius. Now, this is actually a very optimistic eclipse. Not only is it a solar, so we know it's a new moon energy, new intentions, new actions, new attitudes, all of that good kind of stuff, but it's really closely and nicely tied with Mercury. So a lot of our thinking, communication, decision making, things like that will also come into alignment. We've also got this new moon eclipse um, touching Juno, asteroid Juno. Now I don't talk a lot about the asteroids, but this is pretty good stuff because where Venus brings attraction and desire to the table and maybe even a little romance, right? Juno makes it official. Juno connects in, brings the commitment. We're talking partnership, companionship, commitment right? This is that kind of energy. So we'll be looking at some of those energies, not just around romantic relationships, but where we're committing to things as well. Now, this, um, this eclipse actually makes really positive aspects to Uranus as well. And this is positive, new, innovative thinking, changes, breaking down these barriers, right? And it's also one of freedom, right? Uranus wants freedom. He's like, I do not want to be trapped. So you may be trying to expand out in some way. And this could be a time where you get some exciting news about how to do that. It could also be just in this connection with Uranus. I always think of social things. So new social things come into your world, new friends, new people, but also new technology. So if you've been due for an upgrade, this might be the time where you're making that happen. So we've got a lot of good energy happening. I'm going to break down everything as we get ready to look at this chart. So let's pull the chart up. Okay, so now when I'm thinking about this eclipse, I want to tie this really quickly before I start to really talk about the full meaning of this. But I want to tie this together with the lunar eclipse that we had January 31st, okay? That one was in the sign of Leo, just opposite of the one that we're having. Now with these two paired together and we look at what they've been kind of queuing us up to look at, to bring our awareness to, is one, I told you last time, we had a lot of influence going on with women. There's just a lot of women energy happening right now, feminine energy happening right now. So this is a place too where we could be looking at um, the expansiveness, the collaboration of women in your life, female energy, um, women in education for sure, right? Women making different choices. And if you have high feminine energy in your chart, you may see yourself that you are making a lot of new choices happening right now. You're willing to commit to some things differently. But when I look at how these two have tied these, themselves to each other, that lunar eclipse said no more hiding, it's time to speak up. It's time to be expressive. It's time to let them know what's up, right? Sometimes you just got to put on the hat and let them know what they're working with. So when we get to this one in Aquarius, you've been thinking about it. You've been saying some things and now you're ready to launch into something new. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Now let's talk about this solar eclipse. A solar eclipse as a whole when we're looking at what, what does a solar eclipse mean in the first place? It's just like any other new moon, right? However, there is an intensity to it. And this one happens to be a partial solar eclipse. So most of the sun is actually still going to be visible. We don't have a full blotting out or anything like that. But the new moon itself represents the end of a cycle, the beginning of a new cycle. It usually lasts for about four weeks. But when you have eclipse energy, um, it lasts about six months on up to a year, just depending on your chart. Now, the strongest, most important aspect for you to remember, whether you're studying, you already know this and it's old news, whatever, is that the sun conjunct the moon, right? When this happens, everything's illuminated. The impossible becomes possible. If you put yourself out there, it's time to question things. It's time to be ready to start a new cycle. If you will do these things, possibilities and skies are the limit, okay? Now, I want to tell you too, with this particular 
um, set of eclipses that we will have had, the one in January and this one, you really want to look at what's happening all the way until we get to the next eclipse phase, which is going to be July 12th in the sign of Cancer. It'll be a solar eclipse. So some things are going to really complement that and help things unfold, okay? All right, let's look at the astrology of this specific eclipse. So this eclipse is going to be at 27 degrees and 7 minutes of Aquarius is so close to Mercury as you will be able to see here on the chart. And so what this means is we're talking about communication. We're talking about study. We're talking about transportation. We're talking about thinking and ideas and communication in terms of even how you're talking to yourself. That's going to be a major part of what we're looking at at this eclipse. Now the other aspects that come in and help kind of move these issues to the forefront and also give us resolution and make some things start, um, we'll see over the next six months. One of those that I talked to you about is going to be Juno. Whenever Juno gets in the mix, what we're going to start to see is that any place where there's unions, so this can be marriage, this can be any kind of partnership, any place where there's um, commitment of any sort, Mercury's bringing discussion to the table. Right? So we're going to start to discuss things where commitment's at. This could also be, I do want to say this for some people, this could be something that has to do with your reproductive cycle as well. So keep that in mind because Juno was originally a moon goddess. Okay, the goddess of the moon, the goddess of the hollow, the goddess, depending on whichever cultures you're studying. So childbirth, childbearing, all of those things, true love, commitment, they all fall in here as well. And Juno will really symbolize um, this yearning that you have the emotional, physical, and psychological needs that are inside of any union you have, most specifically if it's something around a relationship. You're going to see those kinds of questions brought to the forefront and to the surface, okay? Now, with the solar eclipse, with the conjunction of Mercury that we see here, um, Mercury thinks rationally, right? Mercury is reasonable, relatively practical sometimes, but it's also just so rational that what you're thinking about, your thinking may be fast, it may be in a lot of movement, your mental activity may really be going, you're talking about things that interest you, you're, you're discussing things with new people, but this kind of energy that we're going to create here is going to create a freedom in these relationships. Okay, it's a good time for you if this doesn't hit relationship stuff for you to think about, can you sell something? Can you buy something? Can you start a business deal? Can you write a book? Remember, Mercury governs that third house. Does your website need updating? Is there something with your siblings, your neighbors, your cousins, your car that needs attention? Mercury governs that third house information. So you're going to want to think about all of those things, okay? Now, another aspect that I talked about in the beginning is that the solar eclipse is going to be in a sextile to Uranus, which means, um, again, we've got high women energy focusing here because not only are we thinking about women and commitment and all of this open-mindedness and all of this good stuff, but it's really controversial right now, right? We need to start to consider the family and our family structures and our family ideas and our women's roles differently. There is a big difference in looking at um, our same-sex parenting or non-traditional parenting um, styles will definitely be up. So in your own life, you know, where are you seeing non-tradition all the way around you? In your own relationships, whether they be friendships, business relationships, how you actually do work, where are you finding that you want to do that in a way that's a little bit non-traditional? Because those things are up for grabs. I told you a little bit that I do feel like technology um, comes to comes to the table. Um, I do feel like, oh man, this, okay. So it could even be that we have some kind of scientific or maybe some kind of um, technology advancement that helps 
with things in marital relationships, with fertility, with any of those things. I saw this great commercial the other day, and I, I don't know which company does it, but they have an app now where you pee on the stick, and then it goes to your app and tells you your your five best days to get pregnant or something like that. What a cool advancement. We could see something else happening like that. Uranus makes this eclipse so positive in this case though, so positive for freedom to do things differently, to do things untraditionally, freedom to choose to do things, right? We could see a lot of conversation coming up in, in what people will choose to do with their sexuality and their sexual health, things like that. So I don't want you to be too scared of this and just think, oh, my relationships are going to go crazy. It's nothing like that. Uranus is very, very expressive. And I feel like it actually works in a very optimistic way to give a lot of self-confidence to people who have been feeling like they couldn't speak up for themselves, whether this be about their lifestyle, their parenting, their sexuality, um, single parents, same-sex parents, um, single relationships, right? Where it's like, I want to have children and I don't want to be in a relationship. We could see some of that coming up. But thinking a little bit more about how this may be affecting certain areas of the chart as well, what it looks like to me is that this is going to take inhibition down. People will really want to go through their own path and put things to the side. Now, Uranus is sextile to Mercury, okay? So this could also lead to a space where we're thinking about some mental health issues as well. So if that is something that is on your table, um, if you've just had a baby, I do feel like this is an aspect that could trigger some um, postnatal depression or postpartum. So please be aware of that. We always want to be aware of any kind of iron deficiency when we start to look at these energies interacting like this as well. Now we've got a couple other aspects that will certainly be happening. We've got this eclipse square to Jupiter. So this is positive. Positive again. It means, first of all, I will tell you that I think that um, you don't want to make changes in your life during this eclipse that are extreme, right? And you don't want to make changes in your life if you can avoid them. Um, tackling, like you don't want to tackle everything at once, guys, right? If you need to make a little change in your relationship, handle the relationship. Don't try and handle the relationship, the house, work, and your spirituality all at the same time. Take a deep breath. There's plenty of time to change because if you try and make too many changes, you're going to end up wasting your energy, right? Like you can't put it all, you can't do it all is basically what it comes under. But I'm going to tell you that this is really a really positive aspect. So I look forward to seeing what kind of changes you do decide to pinpoint down because you'll also be bringing a fair amount of wisdom to the table. Now, Venus is also in a sextile to Saturn around this. So I do feel like with considering the Juno energy as well, if you've been feeling lonely or you've been feeling unvalued or you've not been valuing yourself, this is definitely a time with that conjunction with asteroid Juno. Um, that you could be pulling some kind of partnership, companionship, um, commitment into your life. For some of you, this is a wonderful time of getting engaged and married. Depending on where this is happening in your chart, you will experience that. New relationships are definitely possible. Um, Uranus could bring a one night stand to the table. So you do have to be mindful of that. Okay. But really what I think this energy at this point in the game is about attracting something a little bit more commitment bound, not something so flighty. We've also got Mars up here, if you can see this, um, in a square to Neptune. So what this tells me is, one, I think that because this is such a highly sexual, desirable kind of energy, um, please be mindful of not letting your mind get run off. You know what I mean? Like, don't make a mountain out of a molehill. Don't be running around jealous and suspicious. If you think something's going on, ask the question. Don't let that bake, okay? If you think something's happening at work, if you feel like you're sick, check those things out. Go right to the root of it. Don't dance around it. Neptune makes things too, too blurry, I think, at this time. So if you feel like something's going on, just ask a question. You're on the road of positive change here. 
Jupiter in a sextile to Pluto here, again, positive change. I don't think you have to force this. It's very natural. It's like you want to. With Pluto, something has to die off so that something new can live. So I feel like you have the desire here, and it's been cooking for a minute, but you have the desire for something new, some new levels of commitment, some new levels of, of unstructure in your life, and new levels of putting yourself in your authentic authenticity um, out there in a way that supports a life associated with putting your influence towards something that you want, something spiritual, wealth creation, professional advancement, partnership, opportunities, and things like that that open up just kind of right in front of you as we watch this Uranian energy get into this eclipse as well. So really, really like this eclipse. I think it's going to be great. I really feel like when we have an eclipse, the things that have been impossible become possible. It's possible to make changes in your life. It's possible to have companionships in your life now. It's possible, especially if you've got anything stewing in the 12th house, to let some of that stuff go so that you can have wonderful new beginnings. And also because this has such a focus on female feminine energy as 2018 is carrying, um, it's nice to have the space to maybe even just have conversations with women, right? Like we feel like, oh, I know the women in my life. Sit down, have a conversation with them about issues, reality, responsibility. Um, see what the women in front of you or the feminine energy in front of you also has to say because it's going to bring up new opportunities to talk with really interesting people and when we get around new people we get new places we meet new faces and this is also the place where new relationships are formed romantic business friendship spiritual soulmate and otherwise so going to be a really good mood. I look forward to seeing how this plays out for you. Please leave me tons of comments down below. I just want to know how this is going for you. Spot it in your own house. You want to look for this Aquarian energy. Spot it by degree in your chart. And then you want to look for your aspects. So if that sounds crazy to you, I want to let you know that I also right now have for 2018 my next two spots open to study astrology with me for three months. This last session with these people was amazing. You get three months meeting every week and we're going to study astrology. I'm going to teach it to you. You're going to answer these questions and much, much more. So if you'd like to be involved in that, I only have space open for two people. Click in the description box down below. It'll get you all the information. As well, if you just wanted one-on-one -on -one astrology study and you want to get the basics, this is for you if you need the basics. I've got a six-week study program one-on-one -on -one with me as well. It's also in the description box, so click down there, and I look forward to studying with you, okay? Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'm sending you love, companionship, hope, and new beginnings, you guys. Bye!